So why don't we start with just a snapshot of your, your life as an activist. Mm. What's, what's that meant to you? Um, it's been a difficult, but it's been, it's, been a, it's been a long journey. So I started in about 2010 when I really wanted to focus on essentially talking about FGM in the UK, which is female genital mutilation, and really strengthening legislation and protection of girls that were here. That has now gone onto an international stage and with a target of hopefully ending FGM by 2030. That's a pretty rapid escalation. Uh, did you ever imagine that you could have that impact? No, and I actually, it was meant to be just like a six month thing of like, you know, trying to speak to the Home Secretary to kind of really understand that FGM was a form of violence against women and girls rather than this, something that happened through um, um, ignorance. But then I really saw like, you know, the gap in the kind of, in the work that was being done in order to kind of connect like, you know, survivors um, and also legislators and in terms of the social norm kind of conversation. And I really did think that my silence was very much complicit to the misunderstanding of the issue. And how do you go about, because I, I think lots of our students would love to have more of an impact in the world, would love to be activists in different ways, but would just think the scale of the challenge, the scale of the problems that are in front of us. And how do you go about building that a sort of coalition actually to, to do that kind of work yeah so basically my experience uh, or my activism comes from a personal place so but the thing is that they've been incredible allies along the way and I've actually literally found a lot of those in the private sector so I, I think like each and every one of us can 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 be an activist or sometimes I say the antibiotic within the systems that we work in so from bankers to lawyers to everything else is that each and every one of us has um, has a role to play and sometimes it is not necessarily just about donating money to certain um, charities and issues, but really actually actively using your democratic process in order to understand that if you're from a G7 country or a permanent sec um, mem member of the Security Council, that we have the privilege and, and, and the ability to um, elect people that can change the world for billions. And did you, did you ever learn activism? Were you ever taught it? Did you have Mentors? Um, well, I think, I, like, you know, I, I'm the granddaughter of a revolution fighter, so he fought for democracy and the rule of law. And for me, actually, studying law was in order for me to understand the kind of the crux of the things that I do. So my activism ultimately comes from a human rights perspective and really understanding that the rule of law um, is fundamental. So I think I was, I always say that I was, like, you know, I sat at the feet of the founding fathers of a democratic country in Africa. So yeah, like you know, I think activism was always in my in my family and in my blood. And I think there was also um, a level of not taking our privilege for granted, and always understanding that if we could do something, then we should. So be that feeding a hungry person or be that standing up to a dictator. I think I take that um, responsibility quite um, like you know, I take it seriously. And how do you develop the sort of the patience to stick around on an issue because? one feature of, of modern activism is that there's so much that we should worry about that we do kind of bounce around yeah. from issue to issue and we all get outraged about one thing and then we all sign the petition or share the hashtag and we move on to the next thing but you've really you, you've stuck at it yeah because do you know what i'm an optimist even though i'm a capricorn i'm very much optimist like you know and i kind of um i always say like you know i know what i i, I know what my goal is i know what my target is i don't want to save the world i want to be able to save which I actually might sound ironic, but it's just like, I want to save 70 million girls. So if I can do that, it means that I've, like, you know, that I've done something that can actually make the world a better place. So I think it's, it's like a game of football. We all need to play together to get that ball into the net. And I play my position, and I think everybody else needs to play their position rather than just being all over the place. 70 million girls, that's, quite, that's not bad it's as an outcome. But you know what, it's tangible because those 70 million girls are not born yet and, yeah. and, and they are going to be born to adolescent girls at the moment who don't have access to education, employment or financial justice. And if I can give that, it means that we've saved the next generation. So as much as 70 million sounds massive, I just think like one girl, one generation. Yeah. And in my family, for the first time in 2016, we had more girls born without FGM than there were with FGM for the first time in 4,000 years. So, like, you know, change is possible, but it's just not inevitable. So we have to continue to kind of keep pushing forward. Yeah. And you mentioned allies. What, what can we do to be your allies? In, in Oxford, as, you know, as a student community, as men, you know, how can we help? 
Well, do you know what? As 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 equal as I want the world to be, it, it's always like you know, set in the sense that most of the people at this college, most of the people at this university, are going to be the civil service. They're going to be the judges. They're going to be the heads of the FTSE 100s. And it's really taking that forward and saying, actually, you're not part of the problem. You're part of the solution. So, as a civil servant, look at the legislations that you're drafting. As lawyers, look at the people that you're defending and the way that that you're defending. All the as judges, um, look at those kind of conversations. And because you're in this place and you're in this space, you're also probably related to people who hold the power right now so hold your parents accountable or give them the ability to be able to say that actually yeah you might be at the top you might be john who's who's the head of a top um top FTSE 100 company but you also have the ability to actually show others how democracy and capitalism and economic development have actually changed the lives of millions of people on this in this country so it's like we can be allies through really showing that development and gender equality specifically has made the world a better place and i think that like if we can kind of um, amplify that, I think that will be incredibly yeah. helpful to the campaign for me to retire soon. <laughs> Don't retire soon, please. Um, okay, final question then, because we're going to go and talk to the, the students now. Um, your advice for them, I mean, it, it, to a generation that really feels, I think, more fiercely than any other generation, that you know, they, they have this sense of agency and desire to make the world a better place. What, what can they do? I mean, what can they learn now that will help equip them to do that? Um, I think humility is the greatest thing. Like, humility grounds you. And also understand that there are probably people that think the way that you do that are starting campaigns. So basically, gather and partnership is key. It, it, it's, it's the key thing. There's an African proverb saying, if you want to go fast, go alone. If you want to go far, go together. And I think collectiveness is the way forward, is the fact that we, understand, we need to understand. And actually, COVID has taught us that as one of us sneezes, we all get a cold. So the global north and south have actually never needed to work together more than they have now. So really understanding that we all play different roles, but we actually collectively can move towards the sustainable development goals. So I would say you are pioneers, but also at the same time, you could be building on things that are already happening. Brilliant. Thank you so much for coming to Hartford, Nimka. Thank you for having me.